why natural bodybuilding is unfair. So if you guys haven't followed me on Instagram already, I highly suggest you do at Russo Lifts, where you can find more daily content from me. As you know, YouTube is going on a sensor rampage, and I like to keep it honest about my um, experiments with PEDs and just keep it 100. If you want to support, you know, a creator like that who is not a liar and does not beat around the bush, then feel free to subscribe here and follow me on Instagram. But I just want to bring up a fun topic of why natural bodybuilding is unfair. And I just want to start off by saying I'm talking about bodybuilding, okay? How much lean body mass you can carry muscle mass at a low body fat percentage. I'm not talking about lifting for overall fitness and health. We are strictly talking about bodybuilding. So I always see, and again, I have nothing against natural bodybuilding and I really have nothing against enhanced bodybuilding. You know, I'm pro-choice. I think, hey, you're on this world for so long. Do what you want while you're here. I'm more like that viewpoint. And I personally, you know, decided to experiment with PDs because in my opinion, you know, I bulked from 140 pound long distance runner and you can see the pictures of me at 140 pounds. And, you know, naturally I got up to 210, you know, I really got stuck around 185 pounds. And, you know, after that, you know, my noob gains were over and I have pictures and stuff on my Instagram, you know, showing my natural gains. And that's where I decided, you know, the physique I wanted to look like end goal, you know, was not achievable naturally, even though, you know, the guys were saying they were natural, you know, I'm not stupid, that, you know, I decided to do my research experiment with PEDs and kind of, you know, even the playing field. But, you know, I see a lot of natural bodybuilders, especially successful natural bodybuilders, because I personally don't think my physique is anything impressive. And, you know, I kind of just do it for myself and to progress myself. But there are natties out there who have pretty crazy physiques. You know, my friend Dante, I had him on the channel a couple times. You know, I grew up with him since kindergarten. You know, he was one of those genetic freaks. Kind of reminds me of Dallas McCarver. I don't know if you guys know, but that was a big IFBB pro bodybuilder. Sadly, he passed away. Rest in peace. But when he was natural, you know, he was a giant 270 pound kid, essentially. And, you know, my friend really reminds me of him where, you know, I was a long distance runner. He was a football player. You know, I eventually wanted to switch over to weightlifting. Kind of saw what he was doing. It really did nothing, you know. It took me, you know, programming. It took more days in the gym. I was lifting harder than him. And, you know, it took me all this stuff. And he could just pick up a weight and his muscles would grow. And, you know, he built a gorilla chest by just bench pressing in his basement that had more muscle maturity and, like, bigger than 99%, or I'd say 95%. Well, I'd say 99% of the naturals you see in the gyms, but, you know, 95% of the people you see in the gyms. He's no joke, and he has, like, veins and striations at 240 pounds natty. So, there is no way that... You can, just because you're natural, there's a whole other thing that people don't like to talk about, and that is your natural test, as well as your genetics. Everyone like, likes to talk about genetics, but no one really likes to talk about hormone levels in general. Some people naturally don't have high testosterone. I'm just gonna say it like that. And in my opinion, with all the processed food out there, you can actually mess up your natural testosterone a lot easier nowadays. And I feel like, honestly, a lot of the people around my age, you know, who don't really take, you know, their diet seriously and are just eating junk food, you know, are really ruining their testosterone. Because I've noticed a lot that, again, people come to me with, you know, PD advice and I'll always be like, well, let's get blood work done see where your base numbers are at. And you know, for their age, the numbers are really low and kind of pathetic in my opinion. And there are older guys who, you know, share their blood work with me and their testosterone is higher than some of these, um, these, these are this before they took anything, did anything or experimented with anything, you know, their, their numbers are lower than the guy who's older who never took anything. 
So that varies a lot, and I feel like, you know, my friend Dante, you know, he's going to produce, in my opinion, probably like on the very upper scale, you know, a thousand MIGs of natural test versus, you know, someone producing, you know, 300 to 500. That is completely unfair when it comes to bodybuilding, generating, you know, building lean body mass because Dante is going to be able to excel so much faster than um, the person with low testosterone. And the person with low testosterone isn't going to be able to hold that much muscle mass. You know, that's why PCT is so important or post-cycle therapy or cruising because you need to either recover your natural testosterone enough to hold the muscle mass you gained on cycle that's why people who skip PCT, you notice people who don't, you know, do PCT protocols, you know, they lose all their gains because their um, testosterone crashes, you know, it really stresses out the body to come back naturally with nothing, you know, no drugs or natural supplements helping them at all. You know, some people just do, go off cold turkey and, you know, their body's testosterone crashes and they basically go into an extreme catabolic state and pretty much lose all the work they did on cycle. Now, you'll know with proper PCT protocols, again, it doesn't work for everyone, everyone's different, but as long as you bring your testosterone's up, testosterone back up to a level where you can maintain your muscle mass, then you normally keep most of the gains, you just lose the nitrogen look, and you keep some of the strength, you know, you keep some of it, you know, it's taking so many steps forward, so many steps backwards versus, you know, a lot of steps forward and a lot of steps backwards versus no PCT. So, you know, that's the basis, you know, you need to recover your HBTA to hold the muscle mass and the more muscle mass you carry, the more testosterone you need to just hold the muscle mass there. So that's why people get into blasting and cruising. You'll notice competitive enhanced athletes, enhanced, <laughs> enhanced athletes never really come off. They go into a cruise, which means they just lower their stuff to kind of break and then detox and then get their blood work done and make sure everything's in check on a cruise. But they're so far past their natural limits that they need an unnatural level of test to just maintain their muscle, let alone grow. So bringing that back to natural bodybuilding, now that you know that perspective of how, you know, enhanced bodybuilding really levels the playing field, Dante aka my friend who has extreme genetics and produces a ton of testosterone naturally is at a complete advantage over someone who only produces 400 to 500 and if they were to compete in a tested bodybuilding natural show and the guy with 400 to 500 testosterone did 10 times more cardio lifted strategically programmed whatever ate perfect balanced meals with vegetables, you know, slow digesting protein, so it's always assimilating protein, did everything perfect, water intake, you know, blah, blah, blah. Dante, in my opinion, is still at an extreme advantage just from the hormone level difference. And like I said, you can only naturally increase your testosterone so much, in my opinion. You really can't drastically increase it naturally. It kind of is different for everyone and it relies on a lot of different factors and a lot of its genetics, sadly. But that's why I think enhanced bodybuilding is honestly more fair in a sense because that guy with the low test on blood work could match Dante's level. Again, enhancing test or going on testosterone replacement therapy to Dante. Now that brings up the debate that Dante's natural test only spikes once per day, you know, there'd be ester, so it'd be constantly a high level, so technically that guy would be at an advantage. But you can see how, you know, untested bodybuilding in my opinion, again, this is just a topic video, can be more fair than natural bodybuilding. So that's just something to think about and kind of gives you an understanding of blasting and cruising and keeping gains in PCT because I wanted to tie it in that way because a lot of people ask me like what do you keep it's really based on you know those hormonal factors of recovering to baseline after as well as obviously training and eating 
to a certain degree in PCT and I'm just going to release a new vlog how I train in PCT. So if you like the topic videos like this and you learn something, please subscribe. I'm going to try and come back in 2018 and I'm excited to make more videos. So hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you in my next one.